I'm going to try to do some justice here about my message to all of you and, I, and, and what, what my feelings are. A lot of it has already been sent up, summed up. And obviously, I have some mixed feelings. I'm 63. I still have a lot of passion, a lot of energy. Probably should lose a few pounds. I could run around even faster. But, you know, it's 30 years um, at this state federation as an officer. It's an incredible amount of time. It seems like yesterday. You know, 25 of them plus as the president. I served in all those other capacities. My first convention sitting here, and actually I think Mary Lee may have been, Mary Lee Mills, they may have been one or two before me, but my first one was 1977. But interesting enough, 1974, the convention met. And there were some delegates out there that probably none of us up here had really ever uh, met or talked to. And two of those people that were sitting in that 1974 convention knew this kid who was a plumber. He just got out of his time and he got elected to a finance board because he saw something that drove him to get involved. And it was justice. Now, we're not a perfect movement. We're a democratic movement. And I'll say this, brothers and sisters, the day that there isn't a raging debate and discussion going on in this hall, there's something wrong with our movement because we're not alive unless we're having that debate and discussion in this hall. There is no scripts in this hall. There's honesty in this hall. And I'll tell you why I got involved in the movement. Because you know what? It was self-interest. But I took my self-interest and I moved it further for forward for others' interests. I was an apprentice, came in in 1979, went on strike in 1970. I was on a fixed schedule for five years, went to the meetings every month, no voice, no vote. We go out on strike. I come back for the same money. The journeyman got his 5%, 6%, whatever it might have been. I was out six weeks and walked the picket lines with everybody else, but I came back for the same money. I didn't think that was justice. So, two years later, two-year contract, back out on strike again. Same deal, six weeks out on the streets. Come back for the same money. 50 cents, 50 cents, 50 cents as I went through my apprenticeship. So I said there's something wrong with this. Now in the building trades, as an apprentice, you have no voice, you have no vote, you can't run for office. But there's a meeting at that time, there was a meeting every month. And I'll tell you what, brothers and sisters, I showed up every month and I listened and I learned and I watched. And in my fourth year, I had no voice, but there was a, there was a reason to recognize me on our good and welfare. And at that time, the leadership started recognizing me, not as, as, a, as a spokesperson within that hall, but as a good and welfare to speak these issues. So I had a bunch of apprentices who felt the same way as I did. We all got out of our time, we all went to work, we all got our raises, we all went out on strike, we all come back and got our money. Interesting enough, I still felt the passion of that justice. Doing my brother seemed to didn't care anymore because it didn't affect them. So I pursued that and I pursued that and I pursued it and I got elected business manager in 1979 and I was the chairman of the apprenticeship committee, and I made sure that we changed that fixed amount of increases to a percentage so that the brothers and sisters and the apprentices that went out on strike had their fair share of what they went out and fought for. And I'm proud of that. <laughs> now that's the passion that brought me to this hall. Well, let me say this. I'm only standing here today because there was a couple of delegates in this hall who took the time to give me some guidance. One was Teddy Tiska, some of the laborers, some of the old timers will remember Andy Maravich. He was kind of a problematic with the laborers, but he liked me. Maybe that's why he liked me. So what, what I asked for is we have our new leadership. It's here. Lori Pelletier, and the rest of the team is here. But my challenge to Lori 
and the team is to make sure that in this hall today that we find some delegates, many delegates, to recognize those John Olsons who are rough around the edges, who maybe step out of the line, who may be a pain in the ass, and nurture him or her so that they can be here 25, 50 years later fighting with the same passion as all of us for justice, for workers. That's what we are about. We saw them standing here today, and we need to stand up for the courage that they had and give them what they deserve in the way of leadership. <laughs> now, now, you're going to do that, brothers and sisters. You're going to do that with this new leadership. We're going through changes. Let me say this. Change is difficult. Change is scary. But one thing is dangerous, it's the status quo is our enemy. And if we don't change what's happening, if we don't change the direction, if we don't change what we're doing, we will die. And I know that this leadership team will not let that happen. We have labor councils are at the heart of what we do. We are mandated to have a community outreach program. A community outreach program. And the way we do that is to strengthen and to work with our labor councils. And brothers and sisters, how do we develop that young leadership? How do we develop that new leadership? Is give them the responsibilities. Send those delegates to those councils and give them an opportunity to debate, to fight, to make the decisions so that they are in a farm team to hopefully come here and sit at this table in the future. So I ask you to commit yourselves to this team. Because I know and I'm confident of their dedication and their passion and their leadership to lead us there. You know, the 2014 elections are there. You'll hear more about it as you go forward. Your executive board is going to meet and to discuss these issues. But I call upon you to dedicate yourself. We need to work hard. People get lax. They think the state has been blue and we're a blue state. Let me tell you, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, take a look, brothers and sisters, we cannot afford to take one break, one day off, until we assure ourselves that we're protected, that we won't find that kind of an end. I call upon you to do that. You know, there's a whole host of people that have worked at the State Fed, that I've worked with. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's just so many. And, and it's interesting, we see the technology. Thank God, you know what I haven't heard a cell phone go off? And I'm looking, and I don't see anybody looking down on their Blackberries, or whatever we call them now, iPhones. But the technology that we started with, and this is the great tool you're gonna have, is we have the, the new technologies, the voter files, the things we can work with. You know, I think Joan may be outside. I'm hoping Joan's in his hall listening to this. She may not be, she's probably registering delegates out there. But I remember in Hamden, when we had the Coke files next to the boiler in the basement that was kind of damp and wet, and Joan had to do everything by hand and to put those cards together so that we could have some of our affiliates able to make those phone calls to get the vote out for our candidates. We have come so far, brothers and sisters. We have this technology, we have to make it work. And I'd just like to go a little bit through the list of the people of Bednar. I mean, obviously, I am leaving a team that I'm leading right now, and I want to thank them. It's Lori as the Secretary Treasurer, and Sal, and Tom Wilkinson, Melody Peters, Craig Betts, Jeff, and, and, and uh, Mark Espinosa. Too many names. And, and, and Leo. And I don't know if Leo came or if he's in the hall yet. That was a group of people that I've served with and that have supported me and that we've had debates and discussions, but we've came out and we brought ourselves to this day here where we stand. Uh, I also have the staff that was there and the staffs over the years have been so superb and so helpful, uh, put up with me because uh, I'm not, you know, I am a difficult person. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it, I'm a difficult person because I demand maybe too much uh, of people. I demand a lot of myself and. You know, Mary, I was down yesterday morning, 9 o'clock, to speak at the firefighters with Teddy Kennedy, and then back up here to, in a difficult day, we don't have to explain, but in a difficult day, trying to juggle all the things that I was trying to do. So, but I always felt keeping busy have always kept me out of trouble. So Janine, uh, who's 
worked with me since Frank Lorenzo introduced us. Um, you know, I thought she was going to call a question, but she's the one who really has given me uh, the opportunity over most of those years to put up uh, with what I give of my time, which to me is just a pleasure, but for her sometimes is very difficult when you look at family, birthdays, christenings, weddings. I mean, I've really disrupted an awful lot of things. And uh, I, I need to deeply thank her for that as a staff member, too. <laughs> Peggy, Peggy Buchanan uh, really has is, is, is been someone who's been around. And you know, Peggy and I have also, everybody's had you know, their differences and discussions with me. Peggy actually in a role as a leader as the Central Labor Council, you know, we, you know, who you think you are coming over there trying to push us around as if it's our jurisdiction, not yours. So we've had those kinds of debates and discussions. So Peggy kind of understands me in a different way. Uh, David Dalzen came to us. He's just a, a guy, a young guy with a lot of passion that, you know, we need to continue to work and help and nurture. Todd Birch out of my local, a pipe fitter, a guy who's involved in local politics, everything that you need, everything you would want out of a trade unionist. Eileen, uh, Warren, uh, who's probably outside again, too, and but she needs to know, I wouldn't know where I'm going or what I'm doing without Janine on one side and Eileen the other way. They just point me and I never seem to fall down because I keep bouncing off the wall. But I'm telling you, Eileen Warren has the control of John Olson. When I tell Janine got upset, you know, it's our anniversary or something, I said, well, you got to put it on the calendar with, Jean, with Eileen. And, and, and I said, otherwise it won't get done. So, uh, you know, Eileen is the gatekeeper. Um, you know, the, the people at the ULA uh, that, that have been so dedicated and gone through such tough times, Amy Blackwell and Dick Riley and uh, Rita Redekin, who are here also, uh, you know, the ULA is doing such great work and we need to be supporting of them. The ULA staff across the state, all over, we're going through tough times. We had to have some layoffs. Listen, from the bottom of my heart, I hope we can hire back the most recent layoffs and then add people. And we're trying to figure, I'm talking to Melody about creative ways that maybe we can get that done. Betty Tianti, John Driscoll, I served with both of them. Barry Williams, Tammy McFadden, uh, Michael Noonan, Larry Dorman, Don Slayman, Marty Dunleavy, Paul Rapineau, uh, uh, Rick, Rick Ricciuti, former labor commissioner, actually worked at the state fed uh, working with me. Uh, Tom Caracello, who passed too young. Roger Clayman, uh, Chick Avalon, uh, a great, great mentor to me and, and, and someone who made sure that kept me on the straight and narrow. Uh, Marilee Milstein, I mean, who, by the way, no one fought more than me and Marilee Milstein and Jerry Brown. No one. I mean, Janine and, and Marilee Milstein fought over balloons at the women's breakfast and they were going to kill each other. This was during one of the heated campaigns where they were running against me. But, Merrily and I came to really be brother and sister in the truest sense. And, and my heart, you know, and Jerry, I've always had such great respect for the, the members that he represents. No one works harder than the, than the nursing home workers and, and, and those workers in that area, lifting patients. And, and I've been in nursing homes and had to watch my sister now at a very difficult time in a nursing home. And, and I can't, it's hard for any human being to understand day in, day out, see death, see this, see people neglected by their families, not visited. I adopt everybody in a nursing home. I bring my dogs, I bring my children. That's justice when we go to a nursing home and adopt everyone and anyone who's in there because those poor workers care deeply and they cry every night when they lose one of those patients. I'll tell you that from the bottom of my heart. But that's, you know, who we are as workers. And you know, all the CLC presidents over the years, Barbara Nicoli hits Hiltz as much of a pain she was, nitpicking and everything. She's worked with many of you, Jan Schaefer, uh, all the presidents of the councils. You know, Springer, Badalato, the Petronellas, every one of them, Brian who went too, too young, and Ronnie who's just such a great spirit, Ronnie Senior, and, and, and Bob who, uh, told me, he's the one who taught me everything. He says, look, you want to act like that, get your own union. So that's what I learned out of Bill Consensus. Um, and, and, and Ronnie, who's here with us, it's, it's, it's a great family. 
You know, you look at the uh, Espinoza family also, Arnaldo. I think many people don't remember Arnaldo, but I, you know, and I think Marky would uh, agree that for me to work in the, in, 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 for Arnaldo, to, to, he, he was very demanding. I had to go down and meet at the Cuban embassy in New York. Arnaldo wanted me there. I had to get permission from the National League of LCIO because we were banned to have any contact with any of the communists from Cuba. But I went with Arnaldo, and he was, I don't think he ever forgot that, and he always appreciated it. So these are the people in my life. So Mahalan from the school administrators. You know, uh, you look at Bob Moody uh, from the Carpenters and McLeavy, uh, Al Green, Frank Carroll, um, you know, Dennis McSparren, you know, Tommy Van Arsdale, New York. I mean, he was a guy that, you know, a great history, uh, and, and, and it was a friend of mine that, that I knew. Um, Rick, Richard Panagrassi, a uh, young guy like me, now he's retired, and I'll go join him down there in Brantford. Uh, Ed Riley Sr., uh, who was Labor Commissioner and a great leader of the Labor, uh, the Iron Workers. Joe Egan, another great Iron Worker. Sonny Metz. Um, you know, Sonny was a Republican, and, you know, he was uh, a, a very dominant, pushy, make sure we support people who are going to support us. And, and I'm proud to say, you know, Craig, your father made sure when he reached out, you knew what a handshake was. So when you ever shook hands with Sonny Metz, you immediately jammed your thumb right into his, otherwise he had a nutcracker, he was gonna break your hand. But I learned so much from Sonny Metz and the rest of the operating engineers, and I can't say how much, you know, I appreciate all that support. Um, you know, Dominic Lupriato, uh, you know, Johnny Sylvia, who, who was a chairman up in New London, an old timer, been around and passed a long time ago. As I said, Andy Maravich, Kathy Savo, she was with, down in New Haven area, with, with the uh, uh, OPIEU, uh, Nate Back, our sheet metal worker, I think, Dave, that's your predecessor, going back a couple of times. And we also had, there was an international rep by the name of Clayton Buckley, who I had my first jurisdictional dispute, and I kind of beat him on one, and then he came back and showed me, hey, guy, I'm gonna take care of you over here and here, but I'll forgive you on this one, and you learned the lesson. <coughs> Clayton Buckley taught me that in every one of those battles or anything I had, I always had a lesson that I learned. Uh, Joe Bober, who's out of Bridgeport, became Secretary Treasurer, a Republican, who was the Secretary Treasurer, former State Representative, Secretary Treasurer of this great organization. Uh, Terry Quinn, uh, Tom Kitty out of the UA up at the electric boat, John Flynn, United Auto Workers, and Phil Wheeler's here, who was his deputy for so many years. John Wilhelm a great labor leader nationally, internationally. Vinnie Cerebello, who's my kind of guy, who is also the one who brought Wilhelm along. And Wilhelm's living here, and I talked to him not long ago down here in Guilford. So that's kind of a journey that I've taken. But again, brothers and sisters, it all started when two people were sitting here and recognized that someone back in Greenwich had a passion and a desire to be involved and they reached out to me and gave me some confidence to be involved. And I say this, I don't know if the, there's, there's, I think, a, a quote up here that Janine asked me to, to give her, and I want to quote myself right. <laughs> it says, we should never let our fear of losing deny us the passion to fight and win justice. And brothers and sisters, I will never lose that till the day I die. Thank God for my grandparents, my mother, my father, my wife, my first wife who also suffered because of this movement, my children who finally realize what it is that drives me every day. And now I have a grandson and I'm sure he would love that that submarine sitting on a shelf in his home and I may accommodate them if I can't keep that up in my house. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for the privilege, the privilege and honor to have been able to represent the workers that have brought you here today to give me that opportunity from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, brothers and sisters.